Hey everybody, today I'm going to be reviewing Pig. This film was directed by Michael Sarnofsky. This is Sarnofsky's feature-length film debut, and he has garnered a lot of attention, understandably, because it is quite a, an interesting premise, very tactful in terms of the way it sells itself, because it's obviously wanting to appear, at least when you watch like the trailer as an example, as this sort of bloody vengeance tale about a man trying to save his pig who's become kidnapped and you wonder if it is a parody, is it a joke, is it really meant to be a drama? And yeah, I mean, as you watch it, it's very clear very early on that it is wanting to subvert your expectations. And, you know, once you throw Nicolas Cage into the mix, uh, you know, that instantly makes, I think, a statement about that subversion. You're picking an actor who, you know, for a lot of his career is known for being really you know, an obnoxious performer, somebody who's, you know, it's practically like a kabuki theater, often on the verge of caricature, you know, right on the edge of abstraction. And then you contrast that with this type of film, which is meant to be, you know, more meditative and melancholy. And it really slows down. And that I think is um, really intriguing. And it is a novel concept. Again, it's, it's one that I, I really love. I mean, Nicolas Cage out for revenge for his pig. Fantastic. And you discover very early on that this is going to be something that is very different. This is a movie more about love and loss amidst a very sad, very complicated, very dangerous world, the very simplistic or a simplistic idea of, you know, just pure human emotion. But for me, it is a little bit ironic that, you know, as I'm watching this movie, I'm realizing that a lot of the subversion or the subversive tactics that they're using here are actually what make it end up feeling um, very predictable and what make it feel less compelling overall. I love the idea of taking, you know, a certain scene with a certain setup you know, that you expect and then really twisting your expectations in an interesting way. Um, but I felt like this, a lot of the scenes here, while the idea is nice, it's not executed in a way that feels particularly original. Instead, it feels a little bit calculated. And um, for me, the acting in this movie is key. And it has to be really, really good in order for this to work, because not only is it a tactical advantage, you know, from a marketing standpoint to have somebody like Nicolas Cage, but it's also, I think, a very wise choice. I think he is cast by people that are not laughing at him. They are laughing with him. They really understand him and they really respect uh, his performance style. And I think that this is the perfect way to nurture it and allow it to kind of stretch. Whether you love or hate Nicolas Cage, it's his commitment to the roles and his passion for film and for performance that really uh, just shines through. I have related him to many silent film actors, you know, over the course of this channel, when I talk about Nicolas Cage, I talk about a lot of like horror films, German expressionism. I've even related him to actors like James Cagney as an example. Um, it, he's a very strange performer that's always teetering on the edge of so many wildly contradictory feelings. And I feel like that's his power. But what I love about this performance in particular is how he uses all those things he's really good at. And he uses that passion. He uses that physicality, but instead he uses it in a different way. He's using it to be very honest as a performer. His physicality is still very important in this role. Like, you know, every time he enters a room, the character, there's just a heft, you know, to the way he walks, to when he sits down, you really feel it. It's like a bulk. He's very imposing. He's very intimidating. He's very rogue-ish. And, you know, a lot of times, especially in the opening, you see him framed by like a doorway, like a threshold. And it's very reminiscent of like, John Wayne and the Searchers. Very rogue archetypal feel. But what I love so much about it is even though the film, or I should say the performance is very physical, it feels almost more internal. His eyes just slice through all that heaviness uh, in the exterior. His eyes are full of so much pain and so much love, even almost like a an innocence. Even though this person has been through a lot, there's an innocence just because there's this pure feeling of, of wanting love and that's it. Alex Wolf is also fantastic in this. And you know, I, I remember him from Hereditary and thinking he was absolutely wonderful in that film, recognized him here. He brings out a lovely humanity uh, to the character who originally feels very glib, very uh, dry, very wound up. And he makes that transition really, really beautifully to where he really becomes, you know, real. For me, the best scene between them is that first scene that, that takes place in the kitchen where they really uh, start to bond. The writing itself in a lot of these scenes for me does feel very hammy, very forced, and sometimes it feels on the verge of, of parody. And some of that I actually really enjoyed. It does feel kind of like a mockery of certain stereotypes, and there's like a comedic edge to that that I find very fun. But you take a scene like, like this particular scene where they're having breakfast together, and you know, it is 
it's the moment where the film is really trying to hone in on something. It's really trying to uh, sink its teeth into something. There are several key scenes in this movie that, that do that. And I am very impressed with, again, the performances here, the comprehension of that subversion and how to bring that out in a very subtle sort of way. But at the same time, again, I look at a scene like this and, and, and many similar scenes in the movie and I feel like it relies too heavily on the idea of subverting your expectations rather than really infusing those scenes with authenticity with real originality in the writing and you know you might argue that you know these scenes are, are meant to be about you know honesty and tearing down the walls and such and to a degree i i defend that and i do defend you know like especially the tone and the tonal shifts of this film being quite uh, unusual and despite all of that i do really believe that there is real heart and um, real honesty coming through in certain moments however at other times i feel like it's really pandering to the audience for that sentiment which inherently just makes it feel very manipulative in a in a negative way i think when you strain to uh, preach a message too pointedly uh, you close a lot of the ideas up. And again, I think part of that is intentional here because as pure and honest as love can be, it's also, I, I think, quite elusive. There are moments in the film where you think, you know, the tension is is at a point where maybe it might break into some sort of violent um, interrogation, maybe an action scene. And of course you don't, but I don't know, a lot of those red herrings where they're trying to kind of create a diversion for you, oftentimes they do feel very hollow to me. I don't like when you have a cliche like that where the sole purpose of it is used, again, to be a manipulative tactic. Um, an example of that for me would be like the Fight Club-esque scene uh, towards the beginning of the film. I just, I wasn't a fan of it. Though I will say I usually struggle with the third acts of, of films, but I think that this one has a better grasp on its overall message, I think. Part of me really, really loves, really admires the way that they deflate the tension. Now that might sound strange, but it really works here. The more it goes along, the more simple it becomes and the more melancholy. And, and strangely, it does feel very, very appropriate. And then at the same time, you know, I'm always kind of torn with this film, the way it constantly uh, slips back into these very predictable patterns and archetypes to convey that simplicity. Uh, I ultimately will feel maybe emotionally removed from it. And I think that's the issue here, um, just in terms of how I feel about it. Though I like certain parts, as I said, I found myself always wishing that the film itself affected me more. I think it really had the ability to, to take me a little bit further, and I wanted to elevate many aspects of it. Just a little bit of a boost, I think. Even just stylistically, I struggled with this film. Um, aesthetically, I thought it was a little bit lacking. I kind of know what they are going for. It is supposed to be kind of muddled and withered, very earthy and melancholy colors, and you know, that's fine, but at the same time, I feel like it, it just seemed a little bit uninspired, you know, like it needed some contrast to break things up it, just within the frame. Everything does feel a bit monotonous. And yes, you could argue that that is uh, part of the symbolism. Uh, but for me, and you know, I, again, I do agree with that partially, but I do think it would serve the film better uh, if they found ways of bringing out that emotional honesty visually. Pain is awful and, and misery sucks, but it is not always so monotonous. And I think that's often the thing that people miss, especially uh, when it comes to art and conveying uh, sadness. But yeah, just a little more originality, a little bit more authenticity in the film, I think would have just really uh, served it because as it stands, it feels like you know, you're taking all of these ideas, taking all these subver subversive tactics, genre staples, kind of wearing them a little bit and then putting them back. Not really understanding the nuances of them so that you can reinvent those cliches in a more clever way. Honestly, as I was watching this film, I, I have to bring this up, but I could not help but think about Mandy, which is a film that came out a few years ago, and that is um, also a Nicolas Cage vehicle. That is a film that I absolutely love. Um, and I, it's, it might be one of my favorite Nicolas Cage films and performances. It is a very lysurgically tinged uh, pastiche film that is using a similar concept of subversion here by using old genre staples. And in that film, it's like, you know, like eight, 1980s fantasy, sci-fi, heavy metal. And that's the framework. You have a guy in the woods with his wife. They live a happy life. She gets kidnapped and he's out for revenge to get her back. She's kidnapped in a very like Manson family-esque situation, and then he has to deal with the feeling of love and loss and what that can do to a person. Very, very similar concept, though the film is very abstract in terms of effect, and naturally Cage's performance is sort of the same way, but somehow through that abstraction, it's like he pushes so far that it becomes 
real. It becomes real in a way that he, I, I had not seen him do in a long time. It's so real that it becomes dangerous. It becomes kind of terrifying. And that I find to be really exciting. And it is one of the very few films that explores the psychedelic experience in a completely different way than you might expect. Not as some sort of free loving sort of hippie metaphor, um, you know, like where your ethics and morals are just abandoned just for rebellion and expression. It kind of recognizes that, that movement, that romanticism of it, how all of it was sort of created by the people in control. What you think is an act of rebellion is really used in order to control you and to brainwash you. So that's the irony in it. And so instead, you know, using this psychedelic vehicle, it strips it all away and shows kind of an honesty and a simplicity in the end, that tradition, marriage, just being simple and happy in your life can actually be a really beautiful thing. And it's really painful in terms of the way that they, that they leave us in the film. Somehow this film uses something that is already subversive, which is, you know, the psychedelic experience, and uh, it makes that subversive. It's creative, it's hazy, it's trippy, and it has all of these emotions associated with love in the most simple ways, but takes them also into much darker and contemplative territory. Now this is the film that I prefer in every way compared to Pig. And yes, it is a completely different movie than Pig. I'm not saying I want Pig to be like Mandy, but I, I do think that they could learn a little bit from Mandy and just the, the creativity. And the depth of that creativity, I think, is the key. However, I do, like I said, I admire the attempt here, and I do think that this is worth checking out. I do, especially if you are a Nicolas Cage fan. You're gonna find a lot to admire in this performance, and I think certain people will really enjoy it, but for me, uh, it just left a little bit to be desired. But that is the review. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm going to plug my website as always. Uh, I am an artist. I do commission portraits and I sell prints of my work. If that's something you're interested in, you can always go to the website. And if you have questions about a commission or a print, you can always email me. My email is in the description box below. Also, I'd like to give a shout out to my patrons. You guys are lovely. Thank you so much as always. If you are interested in becoming a patron, the link to support that is below as well as my social media information. You can watch more videos here and you can subscribe if you'd like. Catch you next time.